Today on the History of Weapons, we're going to take a look at the very first series of nuclear cruise missiles and specifically look at the USS Growler, otherwise known as the SSG-577. The USS Growler was the first of a series of submarines to be specifically nuclear deterrent carrying nuclear cruise missiles. The USS Growler was number two of only two submarines built under what's referred to as the Greyback class of cruise missile submarines, built to provide a nuclear deterrent during the heat of the Cold War. The USS Growler spent most of its time in the Pacific coast of the Soviet Union during the peak of the Cold War, launched on April 15, 1958, carrying the Regulus I cruise missile, which was used between 1955 and 1964. There's only a few submarines that carried the Regulus cruise missiles. The USS Tunney and the USS Barbero were submarines from World War II, but it wasn't until you got to the Greyback class that the first submarines specifically built to carry nuclear cruise missiles came about. The USS Growler was number two. In the Greyback class was the USS Greyback and the USS Growler. Originally carrying the Regulus I cruise missile, the USS Growler was constantly in a state of being on secret missions. The Regulus missile is also referred to as the SSMN 8A Regulus cruise missile. The Regulus one could take off and fly like an aircraft launched from rail tracks on the USS Growler. It was equipped with two Aerojet JADO booster rockets for takeoff and a main Allison J33 A14 turbojet engine could travel 500 miles with a 3,000 pound warhead. Eventually came the Regulus II, which will allow it to fly 1,200 miles. Stationed in Pearl Harbor, the Growler carried two Regulus I or II missiles and embarked on long-term stealth secret missions, often 60 to 80 days without outgoing communications of any kind. Compared to the massive nuclear power submarines of today, the Growler was a small diesel engine powered submarine with extremely close quarters of a crew of 88. They often spent days underwater under the cloak of secrecy. The USS Growler was also armed with 16 torpedoes for self-defense as the crew would often take the Growler into hostile waters off the Soviet coast. The USS Growler played a critical role during the Cuban Missile Crisis allowing the U.S. to use the threat of not only invading Cuba, but also ensuring nuclear cruise missiles at the door of the Soviet Union. Because of the incredible secrecy of the USS Growler missions, the crew could receive communication, but could not send any because of the time spent in the silent dark waters off the Soviet coast. Often families would send messages to the crew for morale, but the crew could never respond. The USS Growler never fired a missile, but no doubt ensured that the Cold War remained mostly just pointing missiles at each other, which was a great deterrent. Get an idea of what it was like to be in the silent waters of the Soviet coast carrying a nuclear cruise missile. It was on January 1st, 1961, that the crew celebrated New Year's Eve underwater in silence. And Lieutenant Bruce Folt wrote, it's not our idea of fun and good cheer, but doing our job to ensure many new years. The USS Growler was decommissioned on May 25th, 1964. In 1980, it was designated to be used as a target for torpedo practice, but in 1988, Congress awarded the USS Growler to the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum in New York City, where you can see it today. And as evil always shows its ugly head, its weapons like the USS Growler nuclear cruise missile submarine that allow us to defeat it. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. And thank you for watching this episode of the History of Weapons.